not second, not third, the worst. That's nothing to be proud of. That's why Nassimi has created this. And we hope there is a way forward. I'll just drift off this topic because I come back to the, the, the theme. Can we make a difference? I'm just an individual that had a very materialistic life, had a good life. I had six television sets in my house and Roman statues in the garden and I walked away from it. Because there is an imbalance. How can you live with your conscience in this lifestyle and watch people suffer? There's no logic in this at all. So I walked away from that. And can one person make a difference? I got involved with Palestine. I started writing articles, which Mr. Nassimi knows about. Very controversial. I'm an activist. My life is in danger each and every day because of what I do. But you can make a difference because that then extended into broadcasting in America, broadcasting in Europe, and satellite TV, which Mr. Nassimi knows. And I've got my own little program. I've just returned from Tehran. I spent five weeks there doing programs with Press TV. I was offered a very lucrative contract, but I turned it down. Because once you lock yourself into contract and greed, you become part of the system. So I walked away from it. Because being independent makes you answerable to no one. And no one can control you. If someone's going to die, I will die not the people that I'm associated with. So you can, as an individual, you can make a difference, but you have to be very strong. And I think someone at the back there said today, you have to have the guts to stand up and say what you feel. If someone is causing injury to your country, as an Afghani, you have to stand by your country and depend on principle and have compassion for your people that are left behind. That's your duty of care to your country that you've come from. You are the privileged ones. Okay, human rights notes. The government's progress on promoting freedom of expression in recent years is still deteriorating. There is a certain amount of media freedom, but there's still censorship. So it's not quite true that you can say what you want to say in Afghanistan. There is a, what we say offset uh, harassment, which you won't see, but it does exist. Uh, when we come up to the current time, Amnesty International said that Afghan people continue to suffer with widespread human rights violations and violations of international humanitarian law over the last seven years in particular. The Taliban still are prevalent, and I will come on to the educational side in a minute. Women and girls continue to face widespread discrimination, domestic violence, and abduction and rape by armed individuals. They continue to be trafficked and <coughs> traded uh, as a trade-off for disputes and debts. Can you imagine parting with your daughter and your wife to settle a debt? Can you ever imagine that in England? It's not going to happen. But you know, you've come from Afghanistan, you know the situation. And from the male perspective, we should be embarrassed as individuals to put down females in this way. Doesn't matter what's your religion and what's your faith. You do not have the right to put women below you. All people are equal. And women add beauty to the world. If you're, in, if you're a man and you're in a company and there's no women, the room will be very drab. There'll be no colours. Everything is black and white. You put a woman in there and you bring colour and you bring love. So a woman has plays a major part. And having spent two years in southern India, I realized that despite the poverty, it was the women of the village that held the village together. Absolutely incredible. The man would come back absolutely off his head with alcohol and would be straight in there and put him in order. And if he's not a good man, he'd be kicked out of the house for 24 hours or 48 hours. And if necessary, tip him in the river. Let him swim when he's drunk if he's lucky. Okay. Legal developments is, is also a big issue. Uh, there is an issue, of course, like uh, the government uh, passed some laws concerning women in March regarding Shia women, personal status law, which can, contains several discriminatory provisions against Shia women, was passed. The law was amended in July following criticism by Afghan women groups and the international community. Some discriminatory provisions still remain. 
In August, the elimination of violence against women, women's law was passed by the Afghan president and the cabinet. The law criminalized violence against women, including domestic <coughs> violence, and this was approved in parliament. I say again, what is written and what takes place are two different things. You write an article, and then next week you abuse it. What is the point in having the law if you don't maintain it? We, as a group, as human rights group, should support the people left there by saying, stick to your word, stick to your constitution. It is your duty of care for your people. When you make a promise through the law, you stick to the promise. And you can't do this from in Afghanistan. And I think your strength will come as a group. And Mr. Ellis, I think, drew attention to this. Strength is in numbers. We have a small amount in the room here. But if all Afghan communities unite, and remember, I've, I come down from Derby last night after a four hour drive, we've got a very, very large Afghan community, I think 7,000. You multiply that in every city in England, and then every city in Europe, and as Mr. Ellis said, come together. Unite in numbers, you will have a voice. But as a single entity in London, your chances are very remote. As they say, safety in numbers. There is a total of a quarter of a million refugees, approximately, returned to Afghanistan from Iran and from Pakistan during a particular year. The question of displaced people. I mean, I've been to, uh, besides being in the war, I was also returned to these countries as a civilian. And I've been probably six times to Iraq, during the war actually. And I sat down with people that have been displaced from their home. They will never go back to their town or their village ever again. If they've spoken or liaised with British or American, they're going to be targeted. I've spoken to people that were tortured with machetes. They've shown me their chunks of flesh missing from their legs, where they've been electrocuted, hung with their head, their hands behind their backs, their wrists of uh, marked forever, and people where uh, the authorities came in overnight. Imagine very large family living together, grandparents, parents, children, and suddenly in the middle of the night, in total darkness, the electricity is cut off, they go in, and they tell each member of the family, you will never see the rest of your family again. And they take the grandfather in one direction, grandmother in another, husband this way, and then suddenly put into solitude, in absolute confinement in a dark room. They can't hear anybody, they can't see anybody. They don't know when they're going to see their loved ones again. And then purely by a miracle, nine months or 12 months later, they come together. Sit with these people and, and feel the atmosphere. This is the term that I use with Mr. Ellis, compassion. This is the compassion where I'm coming from. You, you have to be with these people to understand what they've gone through. And you have to cry with them. You have to understand with them and you laugh with them. And we talk about human rights, I'm putting some humor into this. There was some, I think Mr. Ellis said it, that when Mr. Nassimi asks you to do something, he does so in a sort of a very pleasant, intimidating way. To a point, <laughs> it goes beyond human rights, you can't refuse it. But, Mr. Nassimi has, uh, has breached my human rights so many times. <laughs> I even wrote most of the uh, human rights thing, you know, and there's me doing all these broadcasting, and then I get a phone from Nassimi, why haven't you done this, why haven't you done that? He's, he's a very funny man. I love the man, but boy, you've caused me some stress sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and the pressure is incredible because I, I'm driving down from the north, right? And I think two and a half hours to London. Four hours later, I'm still on the motorway, uh, you know, and yeah, trying to get to London. I thought, oh my God, why am I going to London? <laughs> um, I love London as a tourist, but I couldn't live here. I'm sorry. I live in a very peaceful area of Derbyshire. The dales and the mountains and the lakes, and then I come to this, you know. I missed the turn off at the college here. It took me half an hour to turn around. <laughs> I won't say who my navigator was, but he was looking at me. I don't want to embarrass him. It was my fault anyway. 
So, as an independent, you can make a difference. Because when I was on this drive, my mobile goes, and I'm driving with one hand in, you know, with roadworks, and now it goes. Yes, it was that. Press TV in Tehran. Can you do a live interview now? I said, excuse me, I'm in heavy traffic. Well, we're on air. Can you? Okay. How long? Five minutes. Five. Yes, that'll be fine. Twenty minutes later, I'm still on the phone, right? <laughs> Trying to drive. You know, this is illegal. I put the phone down. Okay. Job accomplished. Then the phone goes again. Press TV in London. Can you divert into the studios for one hour? It was worth a hundred pounds to me just to divert. But I'm sorry, you, enough is enough. So I said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. And, and I continued on. That's the gist of that. Um, I want to come back to um, the educational system in Afghanistan, because unknown to most people, after the war started, you remember there was a great emphasis on education, especially for females. And so they created like 600 primary schools, secondary schools, and high schools. But what the people don't know, at this current in time, most of them are closed again. And of the schools that were left, probably about 80% disappeared. The schools that remain are for only boys. So now you can see there's probably some Taliban influence still in the area. Because if, if she's got two children, she wants her two daughters to be educated, so she puts them. But if she knows her two children are going to be possibly, something will happen to them, or her mother, uh, her father, mother or father, or herself or her husband, she's going to pull them out of school. So this is this unknown pressure that's going on all the time. And I guess the situation is, is Afghanistan better off from the war or worse off? Of course there are changes, but really the situation has deteriorated. It's quite shocking. You can't blame nature, you can't blame anyone for this. It's just war creates a problem. And uh, I guess you've all got your own opinion on that. So you can see there's a massive, massive reduction in the schools. Uh, the worst affected areas actually is Helmand province. Only 54 schools, primarily for boys, are functioning against 220, uh, 223 schools that existed in the same area. So it's gone down from 223 to 54. Is that democracy? Is that progress? It's, it's certainly not progress. Um, then you have the Afghan children's story. Years of conflict have increased the level of poverty in Afghanistan. The US Development Index rates Afghanistan 169 in the list of 174. So you can't get any worse than that you're almost at the maximum level of poverty in every word. How, can you, how do you feel as an Afghan to know that those that are left behind are in a no-win situation at the moment? Mr. Nassimi has said this many times when I first met him on TV. Do you remember this meeting we had? And uh, he was complaining about the lack of infrastructure, the lack of development, the lack of jobs. Remember that day? I met him for the first time. And he indicated his, uh, his, uh, he was an ethnic minority, you know, there's several groups. And I pointed a finger at him, do you remember this? And I said, there are people around that don't care about you and your race. Because the ultimate goal is greed.